So Marissa, can you tell me about vestibular rehabilitation, please? Vestibular rehabilitation is the mainstay of treatment for people who've been diagnosed with a vestibular disorder. It's the use of exercises based on our understanding of vestibular physiology and the mechanisms underlying compensation to induce brain plasticity in order to improve subjective symptoms of dizziness, whatever that mm -hmm. dizziness may be, this fuzziness, wooziness, muzziness, giddiness, lightheadedness, as well as any postural and gait instability the patient may experience or any visually induced dizziness. Okay. And so what type of patients specifically do you think would benefit from your service? Patients who have been diagnosed with chronic dizziness should be, as soon as they're diagnosed, be referred to vestibular rehabilitation in order for us to start the treatment sooner. There is evidence to support that the use of vestibular rehabilitation early and that we get a faster recovery. Irrespective of the actual cause of the chronic dizziness? Yes, so if we're looking at vestibular neuritis, labyrinthitis, mm -hmm. vestibular migraine, where the patient experiences the dizziness or unsteadiness, if we're looking at BPPV that's been treated, but the patient continues to experience an element of dizziness or balancing gait uh, instability, mm -hmm. they should be referred onwards. People with Meniere's disease, there is again evidence to support the use of vestibular rehabilitation in this population also. And this is because of the visual induced dizziness? Not solely because of the visually induced dizziness. Uh, visually induced dizziness is one component of their symptoms. Mm. It's a very important component because it oftentimes limits patients from going about their daily lives. So people with visually induced dizziness will find it much more difficult to use the computer at work, scrolling on the computer, changing web images. They will find it more difficult to navigate crowds, to be in the supermarket or shopping mm. mall, waiting for the train on the station, as was said in another section. So what we do for those patients is we add an element of visual motion stimulation. So we actually expose them to the environments that are difficult for them in a structured way. Or yeah. we can use videos with moving stripes or uh, moving mm -hmm. dots in different directions and at different speeds. Okay. But that's not only what we treat. We also treat the symptoms of dizziness themselves. So the person who says, I'm lightheaded when I bend over. Mm -hmm. I'm lightheaded when I look over my shoulder or the person who presents with unsteadiness when we ask them to walk across the room and turn their head so they have difficulty crossing the road. Mm. Those are all symptoms that we treat within vestibular rehabilitation. So Marisa, what are the things I need to do in my practice before referring the patients to you? Secure the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. If it's a patient with migraine who will benefit from migraine prophylaxis uh, medication, that mm. should be started mm. before or with the rehabilitation. We also want GPs to be able to discuss with the patient or inform them about vestibular rehabilitation. Um, many times we have patients who come back, who come to us and say, well, I was told if I'm not better in eight weeks, it's not working. Mm. And that's not true. So we need patients to understand that it is a process. Mm -hmm. It's not just a single set of exercises. It's a progression of exercises based on the individual's impairments. We need the patient to know that they will initially feel worse before they feel better. So we expect them to feel worse the first week to 10 days, and then we start to notice improvements at about three weeks. We're mm. looking at between three to six months in total, and it's not a linear compensation. It does fluctuate. Mm -hmm. And if not necessarily to inform the patient before sending them to us, but having that awareness so that they can guide the patient if they come back and say it's not working or why am I feeling like this? So what are the outcomes of uh, the vestibular rehabilitation? Lisa? Outcomes are excellent. We expect uh, over 80% of patients improve. We expect if patients complete rehabilitation, so follow it through to the end, we do expect an 80 to 100% recovery. We mm. expect people to return to their ADLs, their activities of daily living. We expect people to return to work, to their recreational activities and to experience minimal or no symptoms of dizziness or unsteadiness in their daily lives. And, and what affects these outcomes? The patients may not improve, not everyone improves, mm -hmm. and factors to consider when someone's not improving is mm. compliance. Are they actually practicing the exercises? Mm -hmm. Are they practicing correctly? Have they continued 
uh, to do the exercise is migraine. If the migraine's uncontrolled, mm. what we sometimes see is patients who have a certain dosage of medication, but as they feel better, they begin to do more, and, and then they say they're experiencing migraines again. So a referral back that the medication might not be working or the dosage isn't appropriate. Yeah. We also need to consider patients who experience clinical anxiety or depression. They may not benefit from the treatment. They may not be able to comply with the treatment. And those are the factors we need to consider. Okay. Is there any role for recreational activities like Tai Chi and yoga in helping with these patients? Tai Chi and yoga are advocated in people with vestibular disorders, but as an adjunct to the vestibular rehabilitation. They shouldn't be considered as a form of rehabilitation on their own, but rather an adjunct to the treatment they're receiving by the physiotherapist. One important aspect to consider with regards to other recreational activities is if someone has stopped these activities for a long period of time, even Tai Chi or yoga, mm -hmm. that they should return to them in a gradual way. We don't want people to suddenly go and do an hour of tennis or play an hour of tennis. We don't want them to go and do a full match of football uh, on, on the field on Sunday. We want them to gradually return to these activities as well as the Tai Chi and yoga. Um, they have movements that can induce dizziness, so we want to do it in a structured way. Maybe they do a quarter of the class or half of the class and then gradually build up. So I understand that patients need to be encouraged to start going back to their daily activities and recreational activities gradually. Gradually, because yes. Because they will, they will continue to improve as time goes on. Exactly. We don't want people to wait to complete the rehabilitation to go back to their activities. Ideally, that they should, should be, be happening at the same time. Brilliant. So Marisa, I've got some patients who are constantly feeling dizzy and feeling off balance and they might fall, but they, they don't fall. Can you help those patients? Yes, we can. The, a large percentage of the patients that come to our clinics are people who report exactly that. They feel unsteady, they feel imbalanced, but they don't fall. And part of the rehabilitation is to provide specific exercises that work on these postural disturbances uh, with the perception of feeling unsteady mm -hmm. as well as actual unsteadiness and falls. And the rehabilitation is beneficial for all of those. And those who tend to fall, presumably they also benefit from this rehabilitation. Yes, they do. Uh, vestibular rehabilitation does reduce falls risk. And if there's an older adult who's presenting with falls and a vestibular disorder, it's important to know where to refer. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. these patients are referred to the Falls Clinic, mm. but it must be that the Falls Clinic actually addresses vestibular rehabilitation, and many Falls Clinics don't. Mm -hmm. So it would be beneficial for GPs in their area to be aware or informed about what's actually offered in a Falls mm -hmm. Clinic uh, versus their vestibular clinics. We also have a, a separate section on the elderly, which we'll discuss Falls further. So, Marisa, I understand that then the, the vestibular rehab unit or the physiotherapy should be linked with the Falls Clinic. What about the other uh, balance-related services in secondary care and tertiary care? Ideally, we want integrated care. We want holistic management, and the best way to achieve that is through integrated services. If the patient has clinical anxiety or depression, we need the psychologist, psychiatrist, cognitive behavioral therapist on board. Mm. If there's migraine and it's, it's uh, being managed either by the GP or the specialist services, we need that interaction for the effective management of the migraine and, and how to progress with the therapy. So we need that linking up. It, it allows for optimum treatment and optimal outcome. And from your experience, this is not really common. It's not existing that much. It's starting to exist more, but it's still relatively rare and in my experience it does provide best outcome.